Hello, boys and girls. So we are on our last section of Giant Squid. Um, I'm excited, are you? Um, we're going to do the same thing we did. I'll read through it and then you need to go through your Google Slides and answer the questions, okay? Uh, make sure you're actually, um, I, there's a reason why I read it and then I also have pictures of the pages that go with the questions. So if you can't remember it from my reading, you can read the picture I post. Um, remember, you can make it bigger if you can't see it. So um, just make sure you're doing your best work there. Okay. Um, pages 39 to 45. Okay. Taking the bait. A Japanese doctor of zoology, Tsunemi Kubadera, continued the search using Clyde's documented evidence that sperm whales lead to giant squid. Dr. Kubadera chose to study an area of the Japanese coast where sperm whales come to feed each year from September to December. He programmed a camera to take a flash picture every 30 seconds and attached it to a long fishing line. Hooks on the line were baited with chopped shrimps and squid in hope of luring a giant squid into camera range. They lowered the fishing line into the deep and waited and waited. So over here we have a diagram um, and it says not to scale. That means that it's not, they had to make it smaller. But they started up at the water and then this is the camera went all the way down. And then they had some hook with some squid bait and some shrimp bait so that hopefully to lure the giant squid. Whew. And then this is a map of Japan. Um, and here we have where they searched for the giant squid. So just kind of south of Japan, like next to these little tiny islands. So it says Tsunemi Kubadera's expedition to find a giant squid centered in the Western Pacific Ocean. Kubadera made 23 trips over three years to the area and repeated the experiment. Finally, a giant squid grabbed the baited hook. For four hours, the captured squid twist, twisted and turned. Sometimes it attacked the bait. Other times it pulled away trying to escape. The camera took 556 underwater images of the squid before it managed to break free, leaving a tentacle 18 feet long embedded on the hook. When the team brought the tentacle on board, the large sucker grabbed onto the deck of the boat and then onto Kubadera's fingers. So even when it's not attached, it was still moving, it's crazy. So two of the hundreds of underwater photos Kubadura took as a giant squid struggled to free itself from the hook. So these are the actual pictures. The images, though fuzzy because they were enlarged, are thrilling to see as they capture a historic moment in ocean science. That's a really good picture right there. And then here's his 18 foot tentacle caught on the hook. These first photographs of a living giant squid were released in 2005. Clyde celebrated along with the rest of the squid world examining the photos. Clyde saw that a giant squid is far more active than anyone had expected. Despite its huge size, it was not a sluggish creature waiting for food to come near. It made Clyde recall his encounter with another aggressive hunter, the Humboldt squid. Remember when the Humboldt squid attacked him and made him bleed? Why didn't the giant squid leave circular scars on the scientist? The scars on sperm whales are made by a giant squid fighting to avoid the whale's jaws during a fierce but short battle for survival, which the squid usually loses. The giant squid that Kubadera captured was caught in about 3,000 feet of water, and it dragged the heavy camera rig and cable all the way up to about 2,000 feet before it broke loose. By the time the snag tentacle broke off and the squid escaped, it must have been a pretty exhausted calamari, said Clyde. The squid latched on to Kubadera's fingers, but it didn't have any strength left to cause harm. So it says the suckers at the end of the giant, the suckers at the end of a giant squid tentacles can grasp objects. These are all the little suckers. The first video footage of a living giant squid was taken as it was caught on a fishing line baited with a smaller species of squid. 
Two years after Kubadera's photos, another breakthrough. His team recorded the world's first video of a live giant squid. They caught the squid at a depth of 2,133 feet, or 650 meters, and hauled it to the surface. As the team worked to bring it on board, the thrashing squid fought against the fishing line and shot powerful jets of water from its funnel. These firsthand observations confirm for scientists that the giant squid is indeed a strong swimmer, an active predator, and a fierce fighter. It says that this is the Tsunemi Kubadara, PhD, sits next to the giant squid he captured to study. It's now on display at the National Museum. <coughs> Excuse me, of natural history in Tokyo. It's kind of sad that they had to kill it. It's a pretty big one. Oh, look at there. Oh my. That's huge. There's this giant eye. The hunt continues. The world has learned so much about ocean life since Clyde's day of tracking snails on the beach. He and his fellow toothologists have discovered and shared a great deal about giant squid and ocean mysteries. We know what giant squid eat. We know what eats them. We know more about how to find them. We know more about their distant and mysterious ecosystems. We know what they look like, alive and active. There's so much more we need to find out about this legendary creature. We still know so little about its behavior and biology. Although Clyde Roper has retired from the Smithsonian, his determination to find a living giant squid continues because he has many more questions to answer, such as, do giant squid gather in huge groups to court and mate like some other squids do? Do they protect their eggs until they hatch as mother octopuses do? Do they squirt ink? Is the ink bioluminescent? How strong are their arms and tentacles? So here we have a giant squid is one of the most popular exhibits in the Sant Ocean Hall of the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in Washington, DC. I feel like I must have seen that because I went to there. I don't remember it. Scientists hope someday to see at least one of the estimated millions of giant squid swimming, eating, courting, fighting, and just being itself in its home in the inky blackness of the deep sea. Clyde Roper often stops by the sand ocean hall in the Museum of Natural History to visit the male and female giant squid that are on display there, encased in plexiglass coffins, floating in a special liquid that presents them for all to see. They almost seem like creatures from another planet, but Clyde knows better. Sea monsters are real, he says, and I have seen them. Could we keep a giant squid in an aquarium? Scientists would love to capture a giant squid to study it, but could we keep it alive in captivity? Richard Lerner, the curator of fishes at the National Aquarium in Baltimore, Maryland, doubts it. There are many unanswered questions. Will it eat anything else in the tank with it? Will it accept dead food? Can it live in shallow water since it's used to the pressure of the deep sea? Giant squid live in very cold temperatures, so the chiller would have to be immense. Giant squid aren't designed to handle walls. If it tried to jet propel backwards, it could crash into the walls of a tank. There is no tank in the world that could hold it. That's crazy. Um, so this is pretty cool. Here's our glossary. So here's a bunch of words that we do not know um, that we probably didn't know the definitions of, but they tell you the definitions. This is really interesting too, and maybe I'll see if I can post these websites on the Google slides, but here's if you want to look at more things about giant squids. And then there's other books and about the giant squid. And then of course we have our index back here um, that tells you like if you want to know, like I want to know about um, ecosystems, then I would turn to those pages. And here's our authors. So there's the person that um, the book was mostly about, Mr. Dr. Roper, and then Mary Cerullo um, put all the book together. So what a great book. I hope you loved it as much as I did. Um, do your best on the slides. Um,